Did you know that some Social Security beneficiaries will be receiving two payments this month? That's right. While most people get paid once, there are some important exceptions this November, and you could be one of them. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. In this video, we'll break down the details of why this is happening, what changes are coming to Social Security in 2025, and how these updates could affect your benefits. By the end of this video, you'll understand exactly when your next payment will arrive, why some payments are getting pushed forward, and the new tax changes that could help you keep more of your hard-earned money. Plus, we'll dive into how new legislation, like the Social Security Fairness Act, could impact your future payments. Welcome to Financial Area. If you haven't yet, make sure to hit the subscribe button and like this video so you never miss out on important updates that can help secure your financial future. Social Security payments are typically made once a month, but the exact date depends on when the beneficiary was born. For those born after the 20th of any given month, their payment will be sent later in the month. In November 2024, for example, if your birthday falls after the 20th, you would have received your payment on November 27th. But for some, this isn't the only payment they're getting this month. That's because the Social Security Administration, SSA, occasionally adjusts payment dates when certain circumstances, like weekends or federal holidays, interfere with the usual schedule. One significant change for this month is that certain beneficiaries will receive a second payment on November 29th. This isn't an extra payment or a bonus, but rather an adjustment to the usual payment schedule. Normally, Social Security payments are issued once a month, but when the payment date coincides with a weekend or holiday, the SSA moves the payment date up or forward to ensure recipients still get their funds on time. For November 2024, since December 1st falls on a Sunday, the payment scheduled for that date is being issued two days early, on November 29th, which just happens to fall on Black Friday. This means that some recipients will receive two payments in November, one on the 1st and another on the 29th. This adjustment may create confusion for some, but it's important to know that this second payment isn't an additional bonus. It's just the December payment being sent early due to the timing conflict with the weekend. In fact, the same situation happens every year around the holidays, when weekend or holiday schedules affect the payment dates. So while some may see the second payment as a windfall, it's actually a shift in timing that's already planned for. Additionally, because of this early payment, Social Security beneficiaries, who usually receive their payments in December, won't see another payment in that month, making November the month with two payments for them. This can be a bit of a surprise for some, especially since many rely on the regular schedule for budgeting. Therefore, it's crucial to remember that even though you may receive two payments in November, you won't be receiving a December payment at all unless you're a recipient of Supplemental Security Income, SSI. SSI recipients will get their December payment on November 29th as well, which further adds to the complexity of the situation. These changes highlight just how the SSA adjusts payment schedules to accommodate weekends and holidays, ensuring that beneficiaries aren't left waiting for their payments. If you're one of the people receiving these adjustments, it's important to stay on top of the schedule so that you don't miss any important payment dates. As we look ahead to 2025, there are some significant changes coming to Social Security, particularly when it comes to taxes. A growing number of states are making the decision to no longer tax Social Security benefits, a move that could bring major savings to retirees. Kansas, Missouri, and Nebraska have already announced that starting in 2025, they will eliminate state taxes on Social Security benefits. This is great news for seniors in those states, as it means they'll be able to keep more of their benefits without having to worry about hefty state taxes eating into their monthly payments. This trend is part of a broader shift across the country, with other states following suit and seeking ways to ease the tax burden on retirees. In fact, 41 states, along with Washington, D.C., will join the movement and stop taxing Social Security benefits altogether. This is particularly beneficial for retirees who rely heavily on their Social Security checks as their primary source of income. For example, in Missouri, retirees will see combined annual savings of almost $309 million, 
while in Nebraska, the savings are estimated to be about $17 million. This will allow retirees in these states to keep more of their money in their pockets instead of having it go towards state taxes. These savings could be a real game changer for many seniors, especially those living on fixed incomes. For states that aren't fully eliminating Social Security taxes, some are offering partial relief. In Colorado, for example, individuals aged 65 and older can fully deduct their federally taxed Social Security income from their state income tax returns. And starting in 2025, Colorado will expand this deduction to include individuals aged 55 to 64 who have an adjusted gross income of $75,000 or less. This means that even if Social Security isn't entirely tax-free in all states, retirees in many areas can still expect some significant tax relief over the next few years. On a national level, there is also growing bipartisan support for eliminating federal income taxes on Social Security benefits. Both Democrats and Republicans agree that Social Security income should not be taxed at the federal level. However, the debate over how to offset the loss of revenue is where the parties differ. Democrats have proposed adding new taxes on Americans to make up for the lost revenue, while Republicans oppose raising taxes on working Americans. Despite these differences, there is strong momentum for eliminating federal taxes on Social Security, and this could become a reality in the near future, further enhancing the value of Social Security for beneficiaries across the country. As more states adopt these tax exemptions and the federal government consider similar changes, Social Security recipients may find themselves keeping a larger portion of their benefits. The tax-free states and the potential for federal tax relief could help ease the financial strain on retirees, allowing them to use their benefits for living expenses rather than worrying about tax obligations. These shifts represent a significant change in the financial landscape for many, offering a much-needed break to those who have already worked hard for their Social Security benefits. One of the most significant pieces of legislation currently making its way through Congress is the Social Security Fairness Act, which could dramatically impact retirees, particularly those who have worked in both the public and private sectors. This bill addresses a long-standing issue known as the Windfall Elimination Provision, WEP, which reduces Social Security benefits for individuals who receive both a pension from work in the public sector, such as teaching, law enforcement, or firefighting, and Social Security benefits from other jobs. The WEP essentially penalizes these individuals by lowering their Social Security payments, even though they have paid into the system through their private sector jobs. The Social Security Fairness Act seeks to eliminate this penalty by removing the WEP, allowing those who worked in both sectors to receive the full Social Security benefits they've earned. This bill has already passed in the House with strong bipartisan support, which is a promising sign for its potential passage. Democrats and Republicans alike are backing the proposal, as it aims to correct an inequity that has long affected thousands of public sector workers who also qualify for Social Security. While the bill's passage in the House is a significant step forward, it still needs to pass in the Senate. The bill currently has 63 co-sponsors in the Senate, and it would need 60 votes to pass. This means it has more than enough support to clear the Senate, but it now rests in the hands of Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, who will decide whether or not to bring the bill to the floor for a vote. If the Social Security Fairness Act passes, it would be a major win for those affected by the WEP public sector workers who have earned pensions from their years of service in areas like education or law enforcement have often been penalized by the WWEP, which reduces their Social Security payments, sometimes by hundreds of dollars per month. By eliminating this provision, these workers would be able to collect the full benefits they're entitled to, which would make a substantial difference in their monthly income, particularly as they enter retirement. This is especially important for retirees who have dedicated many years of their lives to public service and now rely on both their pensions and Social Security to meet their financial needs. However, the passage of this bill depends on whether Senate leadership allows it to be brought to a vote. There are significant political dynamics at play, with some senators advocating for the bill's passage, while others, 
particularly those who oppose additional spending or changes to Social Security, may resist the idea. If the bill does pass, it would bring much-needed relief to public sector retirees. But if it gets stalled in the Senate, it may take more time for this much-needed reform to become a reality.